Oh, do we have a special car for you today. Today, we are driving this gorgeous 2013 Ferrari 458 Spider. In my opinion, one of the best looking supercars ever made and one of the best looking Ferraris ever made. When Ferrari introduced this car in 2009, it was really a radical improvement from the previous mid-engine supercars that Ferrari put out, the 360 and the F430 respectively. This car features a 562 horsepower, 4.5 liter V8, producing about 400 pounds of torque out of its naturally aspirated engine. This specific example is finished in Ferrari's iconic yellow, a deep yellow called Giallo Modena, which was first featured on the Ferrari F40 when that came out back in the day. And goddamn, isn't this car just gorgeous, especially in the Florida sun today. Today we're gonna take it on a drive, show you how it handles, show you how it performs some 10 years later after its, its release. couple interesting features about this car. When it first came out, the styling was dubbed as pretty iconic. You know, a radical improvement from the F430, its predecessor. It came out with magnetic dampers on the side, also these aeroplastic winglets, which generate a downforce around the turns and actually uh, was elastic at high speeds designed to reduce drag. The styling and lead design was done by Pininfarina as well as Donico, Donato Coco of Ferrari, the most Italian sounding names. And overall, I think the styling on this car is incredible. But enough talking, let's drive it. Interesting tidbit about this car. Its name comes from, of course, the engine, the displacement, 4.5 liters, and its V8 configuration, 458. Fry produced this car starting in 2009, and when it first came out, it was really dubbed the supercar that changed the industry, because it did. start off in race mode because who has time for the other modes here the steering wheel itself by the way if we could start there was designed with input from f1 driver michael schumacher and ferrari designed the steering wheel so that all of the controls on the car for example the turn signals the wipers your brights the magnetic dampening system for bumpy roads all to be placed on the steering wheel. And that sound of that V8 is just so incredible. I think some, you know, almost a decade later, this car still stands in a league of its own in terms of design, in terms of speed, in terms of looks, in terms of drivability. Now the interior styling of this car uh, is very driver focused of course, you have literally all the buttons face towards you, there's no you know, touchscreen display or 
display here in the middle dash, it all appears in front of you. You have the tack in the center, uh, you have your actual uh, radio controls, um, as well as control and uh, viewability of the F1 traction control system, um, as well as you know main things that you want to see if you're going to ever track this car. quality is fantastic especially for a car that sits this low to the ground is this fast the ride quality in this thing is pretty fantastic even if you're on like let's say a bumpy road it feels like a rocket is strapped to your back sometimes in that first gear you really have all the power you could possibly want and the sound is engrossing this is really just a fantastically designed tune to that exhaust note 
you know, iconically Ferrari. And that's really why I believe this car is the iconic Ferrari design. You know, so much of what they learned from designing the end zone, for example, was put into a car like this. All, the, all that, all the learnings, you know, how to make a car that is easy to drive, yet beautiful looking, fast, iconic. That's what I think of when I'm driving this car. While we sit here at this light, a couple interesting things uh, about this car are the buttons. Now, for some reason, a lot of these 458s are plagued with uh, the sticky button issue. Basically what that is, is the material that was used in these buttons uh, on the steering wheel. You can see the turn selectors here by my thumbs, as well as the gear selector going in and out of auto, going into uh, PS mode. They basically melt as a car is sitting in the sun. And what happens is they get sticky. They can actually rub off on your hands a little bit. And it was an interesting design decision. I feel like it was a cost-cutting measure by Ferrari. Um, it was back in the day when uh, Fiat would had a control stake in them. And they decided to put these cheap buttons in, um, which is you know fairly annoying. But for a car that's almost a decade old, you can really pass that. <laughs> you can give it a pass just due to its drivability, its, its sound, the way it looks. standards but you know 3.4 seconds 3.3 seconds it's not bad for a uh, a car from 20 designed in 20, 20 uh, 2009 um, still gets off the line well and you know you do create a decent amount of downforce around the turns and Ferrari actually rolled out the uh, metal allergical damping system on this car which it pulled from you know the Enzo and you actually get a lot more, about I think roughly 30% increase in power out of the turns just due to that increase in downforce, about 300 pounds of downforce, um, which is you know fairly low to compared to 2022 standards. But overall, I mean the car handles well. Uh, it pu you can put it wherever you want basically, and it will go there. I like the VDA system, which is to the left of the tack here. Um, you see. You know, tire pressures, you can actually go into the vehicle dynamics. So we have the F F1 traction system, the electronic differential, the F1 DC, uh, of course, electronic stability control, ABS, and SCM, all things that were pulled from the Enzo, uh, and, and, you know, as well as the F430 Scuderia, designed to really make this car a lot faster. Aside from, let's say, I guess, Porsche's GT3, you don't really get that all that often in these modern cars. Everyone's going turbo, everyone's going you know, turbo electric. Uh, I actually had a chance to drive the 296 GTV Ferrari's new mid-engine, which is designed to replace the F8 Torito, which is in this segment within Ferrari, which is in the 458 segment. Um, and, you know, it is really fast, don't get me wrong. Uh, but you just cannot, and they've done a good job mimicking the exhaust note, that sound, 
but you just cannot replace this V8 and the exhaust and noise that it makes. It really does feel like that rocket ship is attached to your back. Um, I will say the seats are very comfortable. This doesn't have the Daytona seats, which are pretty iconic. Uh, but overall, you know, the the car and its its acceleration really does feel like you're strapped to that rocket going to the moon or something. content we're putting out there is enjoyable and if you think so as well don't hesitate to hit that like button don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button we want to also hear from you you got thoughts on this car do you think it's as iconic as you know i think it is let me know below if you disagree i'd also want to know and if you have other cars that you want us to review there's a form below which you can drop in to submit your car to be featured on this pov type of drive as always I'm Stan, this is Shifty Stan, peace.